Ashwini Sajendran is a doctor by trade and an artist during her free time. That is, when there's any free time. Ashwini, like myself, just recently became a mother and had to go through an enormous adjustment period while figuring everything out. And she's still posting pretty much daily on her Instagram account, so how did she make it? You can find more of her work on her Instagram at Ashwini Sajindran, but for now, please join us as we talk about can hobbyists take art seriously and what does that mean? Balancing art and health when having a demanding baby. Motherhood mythbusters such as will I stop having a life in others? And beginner tips for gouache. Want to be part of the show? Then send in your questions or topics you'd like to see covered to our email at hello at etcherlab.com. If you send us an audio recording, we might include it in the episode. Hi, I'm Manya, and this is Make More Art, a podcast by Etcher, meant to inspire you to keep on creating. Now let's hear from our guest. Ashwini, look, okay, super happy to have you here today. I have Hi. a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> I... <laughs> Some of them might be a little bit cliche, but you are a doctor by trade, right? Yes, yes, I am. So, first off, when did you decide you wanted to be a doctor and when did art become part of the equation? Um, so, for me, art has been always with me. So, since I, I was four or five years old, I think since I was able to hold pencil, I was, you know, I was doing art things and everything. Um, so I think it has always been a part of life. I don't remember even a single year when I haven't made any art or anything like that. So it's been there. <laughs> so I have seriously taken art, like I have been uh, painting and drawing every day since I have started this Instagram account. Before then, mm -hmm. it was like once in a week or maybe twice in a month or like that. And since I have started the Instagram account, I've been painting and drawing like every at least once in two days. When was that? When did you start your Instagram account? Um, it was, um, so I had an account back in 2015, but I was inactive. I was doing my medical school and I was having very little time to dedicate for art. Uh, so it was a year back, I think, in 2019 when I came to UK to join my husband. Um, so I wasn't working for the first couple of months. So I thought, why not start an account and give my time to art yeah. and then roughly after that you became pregnant yes uh, so i started working i started working and then um i worked for like around um, a year just about a year then this covid hit and then i then i was pregnant and i had to sit back at home because they weren't allowing any pregnant woman to work so again i had so much time to dedicate for art <laughs> Okay, yeah. and that's when you started to create more and more and more. Okay, more that does more, make sense. Yeah. So you've been creating more, um, more often since roughly a year, year and a half yeah. ago. Year and a half. Yeah. Okay, and why did you decide to become a doctor? When did you make that call? Um, I think in my high school when I was fourteen or fifteen, when everybody has to make a career choice. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's when I, I, I wasn't, um, I mean, I didn't had many career choices. Mm -hmm. uh, there was only a few because back in my country, people either go for engineering or for medicine. So yeah. I chose medicine. <laughs> uh, it's very interesting you're saying that because yesterday I recorded an interview with Uma Kalkar. She's also from mm -hmm. an Indian culture and she's an engineer. Yeah. And she was talking okay. about that. She's like, oh, yeah, culture. Yeah. And that podcast episode is going to come yeah. out uh, next month okay. in January. All right. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, she was talking a little bit about that. So I'd like to expand on that from your point of view a little more. So you loved art. It was something you loved, but it was not an option for a career because of no, no, culture no. and what's expected of you. Yeah, no, that's that was not a career choice at all because um, I have many. I've been to art school, like as a oh. hobby when I was like, yeah. I've been, um, I mean, as a hobby, uh, when I was um, 13, 14, I, I used to go to art school for around, I think I went for four years, mm -hmm. every weekends, 
so i learned that if you make an art as a career you won't be very successful it's you need to have luck okay. uh, you need to be very good at art in order to be successful in art in my at least in my place mm-hmm. so it was for sure that it was not a career choice for me <laughs> yeah okay so you yeah. okay so you've then even though i wanted to yeah even though i wanted to but uh, yeah due to family and relatives they would ask definitely ask why you by choosing this yeah but even so you stick to art as a hobbyist right so it's yeah. a hobby that you have it's a passion of yours yeah. why do you yeah. love it so much i think um first of all i love love to create realistic cards and when it when it comes to life it gives me you know kind of happiness um and it's also a mode of relaxation for me every time when i sit and paint i just forget everything around me uh, <laughs> it, it's so much relaxing and 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 when you create and and the end result when you see it's coming to life the realistic things uh it gives me so much pleasure and happiness okay does yeah i know you like being a doctor but does mm-hmm. what career aside what brings you the most joy your current profession being a doctor which is amazing or your yeah. hobby of art making just curious <laughs> yeah that's difficult question i love my profession i love treating people uh, i love the way they thank uh, when i treat them um it's a very very nice profession mm-hmm. but at the same time i love art too it, it's like i love both <laughs> you couldn't live without either yeah no i can't live without it <laughs> wow beautiful okay so and we're getting to the part that i'm very curious about i don't i never really explored this in the podcast episode but you are a mother of a three month old three and a half i have a seven month and a half at the moment at home uh and we have a lot of moms listening to this podcast new moms old moms all sorts of moms grandmoms um well <laughs> how do you manage to make art with such a tiny baby at home it's very very big struggle uh, to be very honest so i make use most of the time when she sleeps mm-hmm. that's she's a good sleeper also, um so she sleeps like 4 to 5 hours during day mm-hmm. sometimes that's more good. than that she would that's yeah really she would good. take like 4 <laughs> 3 to 4 hours of good sleep at one go and then she would wake up play for some time and then she will again go back to sleep for another 2 hours so oh that's my god like that's heaven now oh, <laughs> oh. i'm just making use of those times so Smart. the moment she sleeps i put down her to sleep i do my household things and then i come sit and paint and if, when she wakes up i'm with her i play with her i do the things yeah beautiful that's how it works How are your energy like cuz I'm 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 asking because I'm struggling a lot uh <laughs> to make art and my baby does not particularly enjoy sleeping. He's seven months now but even when he was three, he would sleep for a oh. half hour and I'm like, "Oh, that okay. was good. One hour was like a miracle. <laughs> We've been getting a lot of help from expert to get him to sleep yeah. properly. He's a little bit better now, but still it's it's not easy to get him to sleep. So I'm always either exhausted because I have to be around him so much yeah. or and I just want to sleep or and then you have I'm sure you can relate. The baby is sleeping. Yeah. Okay, perfect time to make art, but the house is a mess. Yes, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. How do you navigate that? I I'm still getting used to it. I I don't think so I'm good at it. um either my house is messy or I, or I'll be making art <laughs> that do, both doesn't go in hand in hand mm-hmm. yeah do you, do you yes, get so. help with uh, the house yeah. stuff so you... not not really so we live in a very tiny space we just have two bedrooms and just um, a living space attached to the kitchen mm-hmm. so there's nothing much to we don't use the other room so it's just one room and one living space so mm-hmm. um there's nothing yeah so it's easy to clean um and we do cooking like uh, once in a two to three days so yeah, we yeah so you cook for the oh it's smart yeah cook for two to three days and we just do so we don't need to cook a lot and even if we do we have to store it in the fridge to yeah. have it next day so that saves a lot of time mm-hmm. and when my husband is around he also helps me a lot so it's good <laughs> yeah the trick is having a great husband i can yeah, that, that's that. it yeah yeah uh 
yeah, he loves one... to play with the daughter with my daughter i mean with our daughter so when he is around he will take care of her fully so i don't have to worry about that and you're not working as a doctor at the moment right you have uh, you have you have leave until how long yeah, are I, you staying home for until april I, i'm until april I'm, i'm thinking of extending it because i need to have somebody around to look after my daughter yeah so you have to think about it yeah so at least for we... april i'm not working Yeah, which April is something 20. that varies a lot depending on countries because you're in the UK yeah. and the UK kind of gives yeah. you one full year to be at home with your daughter, right? Around that? It's, it's, they give around six months. I'm, I'm not sure about six one months. year. So, okay. yeah, six months is for sure. They gave you 90% pay mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, I'm living in Portugal. Yeah. It's less time, less pay. And there are countries that are better, yeah. countries that are worse, yeah. uh, which creates yeah. some stress for new moms. Uh, but yeah, I think... It's really important to do exactly as you say, navigate that, manage yeah. uh, your energy. It's something that I keep telling everybody. You can't manage your time. You can only manage your energy because time keeps yeah. on passing by. You don't really, you yeah. have no control over the time, yeah, but you have control. In, your tip is great. Be, make food, freeze it. You don't have to worry about food. Yeah. And yeah. then use the time that the baby's sleeping for art. If your baby's like mine yeah. and does not sleep, what I decided to do particularly if, if seriously for any moms of kids who do not mm-hmm. sleep out there I what I do is I make art with the kid so at least oh. it's something artsy and it scratched yeah. the itch a little bit you know yeah that's true I used to do that because my baby was very fussy in the first couple of months I would mm-hmm. say so until two months she would not lie down she always wanted to be with me so I had that carrier which you oh. used to carry the baby yes. <laughs> what I used to do I used to do was I used to keep her swaddling. on my chest yeah, yeah swaddling and then I used to do my art but it does it didn't work for long because it, it, it kind of obstructs the view and yeah, things like that you can't it's like you're having a from... huge belly again yeah yeah, yeah no I, I just <laughs> grabbed my starts kids from your neck. <laughs> yes the belly starts from you it can't move I, I just grabbed my kids hands and foot and I just gave him ink like not ink like baby paint and I just had fun oh. with him and we're making like Christmas cards or trying to so it's it's that so I, I recently just came up just for my own sake because I'm working a few hours and I have the kid so I'm just for my own sake I'm creating a very simple challenge for myself like I'm doing mm-hmm. like a daily Pokemon challenge with just fingerprints oh, and wow. very little drawing and it's really simple. Mm-hmm. And it's something mm-hmm. that I do in like 20, 30 minutes a day. And it just makes me feel a little better that I'm doing something. It's not a painting. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's not, okay. you know, something that I'd like. I'm not, yeah. a, I'm yeah. not a creating a new skill or going yeah. deeper on that. But just something that makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah, um, so, yeah, that's I'd love good. to hear yeah. the thoughts of everybody listening to this uh, episode. If you're moms or if you're friends with moms or you're dead. Um, I'd love yeah. to hear your thoughts about how you manage uh, your time and energy and time for painting while you have a kid because it's it's hard. Uh, only recently I had a conversation with David um, Morales and that episode is coming down January and um, he has two teenage kids or nearly adults. I, f- I just clearly I forgot. And he said something that really resonated with me, which is just, you know, pause art if you have to. Uh, your mm-hmm. kid is growing. It's precious time that is not going to yeah. come back. So just enjoy that to the fullest. The time yeah. comes where they become teenagers. They won't care about you. And then you can do all the painting in the world. That's more or less <laughs> how we manage his art. Uh, yeah. yeah, That made me feel so much better. I don't even know why. Just like permission but... to not do anything if you can. It's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, but that's going to take like another 10 to 15 years to go for them to go into teenage. Yeah. I know, but uh, it's just, it's the pockets of time, like you said. Snapping, mm-hmm. then they go to daycare. Uh, sometimes I have a daddy day. Like, I remember when he was like two months and it was still summer here. And I'm like, hi, daddy. So <laughs> have fun with your kid. Yeah. It's in the freezer. Yeah, bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best uh, beach day of my life. I used, yeah, I'm doing that sometimes with my husband. <laughs> Good. It's all yours. I don't want. To. <laughs> yeah, have fun. B- have daddy fun. bonding time. Um, yeah. Okay, art wise, um, you became really big on Instagram for the little time that you've been there. So you have at the moment of this interview nearly seventeen thousand followers. Yeah. Um, and what is your preferred art medium? So, I. <laughs> In, I think I I love all mediums except pastels and I haven't I haven't have never tried pastel oil pastels and 
mm-hmm. such perfume so i love oil i love acrylics watercolors gosh and recently i think my favorite is gosh mm-hmm. um, so gosh is a medium that i have tried like couple of months back and since mm-hmm. then i've been in so much love with this medium um so yeah gosh is my medium and that's the medium that we're going to do for your live demo on the 22nd yes. right Uh, yeah. So if you're listening to this episode before December 22nd, Ashwini and I are going to go live for a free demonstration about how to use gouache to create beautiful landscapes. And we're doing starry night skies, right? Yes, yeah, and glowing night skies. Painting a night scene in gouache. So that's a challenge, at least for me it is. So if you'd like to <laughs> get started with gouache, learning how to paint night skies, then uh, I think this is going to be fun. So gouache, so you're more of a, even though you use a lot of mediums, clearly, you have a lot yeah, of gouache on your yeah. feed. What yeah. is your biggest gouache struggle? Um, I think with gouache, um, I struggle with making, you know, the um, dramatic, dramatic skies is very difficult to make with gouache. Mm-hmm. Because I think when you mix the colors of sunsets or dramatic sky, it gets kind of muddy. Um, I don't like that mixed colors. Uh, there's something with dramatic sky. I don't. I, I always struggle to create a dramatic sky with a gosh. What would you call a dramatic sky? So it's like a sunset sky with a different, mm. with lots of colors. Um, you know, orange, purple, um, violet. It's like lots of colors in the sky. And, Uh, you I need see. to be very good at it when you have to make it. So I think it's very easy to make it with watercolor mm-hmm. um, and also acrylic because you can add, keep on adding layers and layers once acrylic dries. Mm-hmm. But with gosh, uh, when you try to keep on adding layers, the, the anti-painting, it, it gets activated. And when you try to mix it, it gets activated. It, it mixes and, and the result would be really muddy. Okay, I had no idea because I've never painted with gouache. I mean, I haven't touched yeah. gouache in years. And you're going to explain that to us on because the live demo. How, how do you overcome that? How, how do you make it so it doesn't become all muddy and weird? I have tried very less dramatic skies with gouache because of this. <laughs> Even if I have made a couple of paintings, but I have never posted it any, on any social media mm-hmm. because it doesn't look nice. Mm-hmm. So I'm still working on it. I think... If you add a lot of whites in those colors, mm-hmm. it will get better. When you try to add just just the colors without adding whites, it doesn't look that good. But when you add more white and make it more lighter, mm-hmm. it gets it looks better. Okay, that's that's a good tip. Yeah, that, I have seen many many gosh artists doing that, and I'm working on it. Someday I'll I'll be successful with dramatic. <laughs> well, I think you're doing a lot of. Uh... Yeah great paintings in gouache that have a lot of success already this is the curse of the artist you know we always see what can get better and, and uh, yeah. we're like oh one day i'll do that and like but look at everything yeah. that you're already doing and it's gorgeous you need you need to have that in order to you know be be more be to have more Critical. skills and yeah, yeah. to Otherwise, keep on climbing that in one place yeah yeah, yeah keep exactly. on explaining keep practicing Otherwise, no you're stagnant. Yeah, you won't grow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And growth is important, even for hobbyists. Because, see, being a, that's another thing. Being a hobbyist yeah. does not mean not mm-hmm. taking art seriously. You're the living proof of that. You're a doctor. You're a hobbyist yeah. for art. But yeah. you're taking this very seriously. So yeah. what are your thoughts about that? I mean, if some people just think that artists who are hobbyists are just doing that for just, you know, the funds of it and noodling and no one is serious. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I think you... Everybody needs to have a one serious hobby. Otherwise, they will go mad in life. Mm-hmm. When you have stress, you need to focus on something that will distract you. So definitely art is that for me. Um, so during every stressful time, I just sit down and paint and I just forget everything around me and what's stressing me and things like that. Yeah. It's kind of, it's like meditating for you. It's like meditating, yeah. Beautiful. I just forget everything. I mean, if there is any stressor, I I don't I mean I don't take it seriously when I'm painting, so kind of gives me um, something to my mind. Yeah. Any good beginner tips for people starting in with gouache? Uh, 
try simple landscapes like use lots of blues and greens it won't go wrong my tip from my experience blues so, yes blues blues and whites you can't mess up with blues and whites you have really? to be very bad yeah you so see you can make a blue sky very easily with gosh so you don't mix any colors just use whites and blues cobalt blue and white okay yeah and you can see. create a very nice very nice sky and and a bit of green for the foreground so okay. a very good landscape is already ready okay Just, okay, you guys try that and post that on social media and tag us, yeah. tag Ashwini, tag Etcher, uh, under uh, like um, at Etcher underscore Lab on on Instagram, and we'd like to see your skies and and landscapes if you're doing this with cobalt blue, white, and a green of your choice. Green, any green, any green, and a bit of lemon yellow. <laughs> lemon yellow, okay. Poor yeah, color. Just Not create tricky. a green mountain with a uh, sad green or yeah, lemon yellow. Sad mm-hmm. green with lemon yellow. Or light. and a sky and a sky with a uh, cobalt blue and white and there you go and you have a beautiful yeah. gouache painting and it's a great yeah. uh, starter pointer for yeah. anyone who wants to embark on a new gouache journey just yeah. uh, let's practice that and try to get that to work okay everybody grabbing your gouache paints and, and brushes now yeah. any any other tips anything you'd like to share before you wrap up to our audience who are either beginning their gouache or art journey or to moms who are struggling to find time to make art while they're balancing life and work mm-hmm. so for uh, beginners as an, to begin with art uh, so keep practicing keep experimenting don't judge your work and don't compare your work with anybody that's very very important um so if you're a beginner that's that's a that's a no 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 do never compare with anybody keep working on it keep practicing do the medium which you love uh, mm-hmm. and do i mean do the subjects which you love and one day you will be able to create something that you will be proud of beautiful what do you think of the episode please let us know what resonated with you on the comment section of the post associated with this episode at etrelab.com forward slash as That's etchrlab.com forward slash as. Or if you're watching this over on our YouTube channel, please simply use the comment section below. If you're enjoying the podcast, please help us keep the show alive. You can subscribe and give us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts at etchrlab.com forward slash go forward slash Apple. Or if you're more of a YouTube viewer, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our most recent videos. Sharing is caring and every little bit helps. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Until then, let's make more art. Bye.